record. Everybody relax. I have hit the record button. I see that we are actually recording. That's always the thing that scares me the most. Did I actually hit the button? <laughs> Hello, Amy. Hello, Jin Feng. Hello, a couple other people I see bouncing in. We are very nearly at six o'clock. I am going to bring Peter and Beth on screen. Uh, there, does anybody see Peter and Beth now? Or is it still, who do we have? All right, I believe we are seeing you. Great. At least I do. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, some people are chatting on their way in. That's great, I'll get back to you in a moment. I've hit record. So, we are gathered here today, first of all, uh, good day to all of you, wherever you are. Thanks for joining us for this exciting and empowering look at what Beth and Peter Bostrick have lived, what they've learned, and what they're now sharing through their book, You Can Choose. The Purdue Alumni Association is so happy to present great content like this to our members. My name is Pat Brown. I'm the Director of Digital Marketing for the Purdue Alumni Association, and it is my genuine pleasure to lead tonight's conversation with Beth and Peter. I'll let them share about themselves as they choose, but as a matter of introduction, they're both master's graduates from the Craner School of Management here at Purdue. They have years of corporate and entrepreneur entrepreneurial experience, uh, including both high highs and low lows that mm -hmm. they have drawn from to publish their book and present to groups like this. I think you're gonna find them warm, open, uh, truly excited about what the future holds, not just for them, but for you, me, and anyone else they can reach. So. A uh, couple quick housekeeping notes. Please keep your microphones muted. Uh, please ask questions via the chat feature. And a recording of this presentation will be available to you all in the next couple days. Look for an email that will provide that link. With that, let's say hi to Beth and Peter. Anything mm -hmm. like you'd like to tell everyone before we begin? You know, I would just say thanks for coming and hopefully in this short period of time you'll get a lot of good information that you can take and go forward and, and just living your life because it's it's something that's um, I think very relevant for everybody because we are all we're all thinking which is a piece of what we'll touch on but but whatever you're thinking about is really 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 powerful so don't cut it short or sell it short yeah. you know what I mean? Great. No, I'm just excited to be here, and it's fun to be able to get back to, to Purdue, who's done so much for us to yeah. enable us to go on this journey. Yeah. Uh, I have the book in front of me, and for those of you who, who have or have not seen it, uh, it is, an, I want to say, an easy read, but that's not true. Uh, it is not uh, word heavy, uh, but it has word words that make you stop and think. Uh, the first set of uh, few questions I'm going to ask you, I'm not even in chapters, I'm in the introduction. Um, <laughs> I, I am, I'm not kidding. Uh, yeah. Quoting one of the fundamental principles of the you can choose philosophy is that we have individual choice. We believe each of us has choices and we get to live a full life based on those choices. As we sit here with a group of people who are considering in some form or fashion entrepreneurship, and in my limited experience with entrepreneurship, I don't recall a great sense of individual choice and empowerment. Can you, can you walk us through uh, the thought process here? Sure. The thing that's, I guess, really powerful, and we um, learn this, I guess I'd say very backwards from the way um, education, you know, you're supposed to learn a lot in school and then go out and, you know, make your mark in the world. And we certainly did that, but but we also realized that there was a really important piece that was missing, and that was how powerful your thinking is. And I think it's especially important for people who are either entrepreneurs or considering um, the world of entrepreneurship, because there's not a lot of um, oh, basic processes that you go through. I mean, if you go take a job at a company, there's a career or corporate ladder you could climb. But as an entrepreneur, everything is open. It's 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 always in flux, and so the way you think about yourself and how you present yourself in the world is a direct relation to the way you think. And so um, with the you can choose statement that you read there, Pat, that basically says that all the thinking you're doing makes a big difference in the world that you experience. And as an entrepreneur, if you can think of yourself as 
as successful and happy and enjoying what you're doing, even though say it sometimes gets pretty tough, that will always work to your advantage. Right. I mean, there's there's 60,000 seconds that you have to to make a choice, and you do make choices a, a day. And if, if if you're conscious of what those choices are, you can do so much more with it. So every day you have a choice to what every minute you have a choice to think about what you're thinking about, and you can do that and, and to, to great to great benefit. Yeah. Uh, still in the introduction, a, a line that. Uh, Boy, it strikes home with me. We can't blame others. Nothing happens unless we create it. It's all on us as individuals. Well, as an entrepreneur, there's nothing more true than it's you. Uh, right. It's easy to get a feeling of everything's against me. Everyone's against me. This is too difficult. I don't have resources. Um, yeah. Is that accurate? Is that common? Well I will say it certainly feels that way as an entrepreneur. Anybody who's been in an entrepreneurship role, and I would argue in lots of other roles, I'm sure new moms have the same same kinds of things that they're dealing with or new dads. But but I think as an entrepreneur, there's so much riding on all the choices that you make along the way. But one of the things that's really empowering that we realized in retrospect is the way we thought about ourselves we didn't think that made a huge difference in terms of the way we presented ourselves in the world. Mm. And you, when you're in those really dark spaces, when tough things are just really tough, the way you think about yourself is honestly your, your ladder out of that, that black spot or that hole. Because if you're continuing to think about what it is you want in your life, in your business, etc that's what comes your way and if you're thinking negative thoughts or you're a failure or nothing's ever going to work well that's the way it'll work so so it's really very very important in whatever it is that you want to do that you you think about what it is you want and then continually shift your thinking in such a way it takes a little bit of practice because we don't really socialize that into ourselves but that's really the way we found that the world works. Yeah, and there's a lot of, it's easy to slip into a feeling of being a victim, right? When something outside is happening to me. Um, but for the most part, we can take responsibility for what's going on. I mean, maybe something bad happened in the past where you find yourself in a difficult situation, but you always, always have choices from where you are now in terms of what you're going to do. So it's not so much what happened, it's what, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to take this situation that you've been given and use it in some way, shape, or form to move forward? And that's really what we're talking about, and you can choose, is what are you going to do? What are you going to choose to do next? Mm -hmm. Can you give me some practical examples? Where do you look for support? Because when you have that lonely feeling, uh, I personally tend to withdraw. Uh, but where did you find support? Uh, you know, do we look to faith? Do we go to a gym? Do we spend, you know, do we read? Do we go to the library, double down? What, yeah. what, what works? Yeah, th th those are all great, fantastic examples. And, you know, I, I know for sure that, because I used to suffer from depression. So I used to go, go down deep at times when things weren't going well. And when we were working on the company itself, I was really struggling with it and, and you know, went to a, a clinician and everything. So it was definitely a, a situation. She didn't have any concept of what, of what the um, depression means, but it was certainly uh, impactful for me. And how to get out of it, there's a bunch of different ways to make that happen. I mean, Beth can talk about some of the things she does, but for me, what it was, was, was changing my, my mindset. It was, it was smiling a little bit and getting out of, basically learning to get out of my own way. Yeah. And actually, he'd actually, this is, this is a true story. He would actually take a shower and come out of the bathroom with a smile like pasted on his face. And I was like, are you like really smiling or are you like grinning? Because <laughs> I couldn't always tell the difference. And yeah. he said, I'm painting it on today. I'm just going to paint it on. It's like, okay. So, so it, you know, out of a really dark space, you can move out of it. But um, for myself, that worked. But for me, the primary uh, tool was really getting out on my bicycle and getting out and, and yelling at the world and nobody could hear me and so forth. So I think for each person, it's really personal. 
And the, the one thing I'd say is really important is that you, you learn to be okay with your thoughts because if you don't do that much, it's kind of scary when you first do it, but, but the more you get to know yourself and, and you are your friend, really, you're not your enemy. Um, and I think it's just taking the time to spend time with yourself in a quiet place where you're not bombarded with all kinds of uh, external stimuli, other people, whatever, uh, so that you can mm, dial it down, some of that, that noise, so that you can really hear what you're thinking. Yeah, and one thing I want to add too, if anyone's thinking about starting a company or going out and doing something different, they need to be comfortable with themselves first because you are, your, are, you are going to be your constant companion throughout this journey. And if you can't, if you don't, I guess, love yourself, I'll just put it that way, and, and trust yourself going forward, it's going to be a, a, a tough place to go. So you're, I'm lucky that I have Beth, and she's lucky that she has me. So it hasn't always been so great to see you. It hasn't always, yeah, exactly. It hasn't always been that way. But we've learned to work with each other as we go through. And, and when we were most successful is when we were our better friends and, and when we were our better friends of ourselves as well. So before you go on this journey, make sure you've got a good relationship with yourself first because you're going to count on yourself. And, yeah. and once you have that relationship built up, then you can do so much more. Right. And it's yeah. not just a business. It's everything in your life, by the way. Yes. I, I, Odd, odd side note, today's World Suicide Prevention Day. Um, you know, I want to take this opportunity and I, people need to advocate for their own mental health. Um, there's still too much stigma associated with it. Um, and I happen to be uh, open to page 13 of You Can Choose, uh, where it's called It's All About You. And, and one, of the, one of the thoughts in here is take care of yourself first. Everything in life builds from how you see and take care of yourself. And I think that's something that people don't recognize when they're struggling. Um, I, I, I don't know if we need to go farther. You covered that a lot, but um, you know, but you're the it, only vehicle you have. I, I think, it, well, I think it's true. I mean, it goes back to what Peter's saying is you are your, you, you're always going to be with yourself pretty much through your whole life, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, why don't you get to know yourself? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, Sounds kind of simple, but but it's really a, a powerful tool that is really not, I think, fully recognized. And I guess that was partly um, one of the big learnings for us we went through this whole process several yeah. years ago. Yeah. A uh, couple questions have come in on chat. So once you know what you want, where do you start? Where do you start from there? Ah, good question. Good question. <laughs> Um, this, what you do, and this is, this is one of the things that's, um, I think really powerful about, um, your thoughts. Um, once you've developed a practice, whatever it is, uh, for me, it's riding a bike, other people, it's yoga, other people use, uh, meditation apps, but you, you have some kind of practice that helps you quiet the noise in your head. And then what you do is throughout the day, you pay attention to what you're thinking and what shows up. And so you can plan, you know, every, um, you know, every step you make. Uh, but what happens when you plan the steps, especially as an entrepreneur, is you miss out on opportunities because the opportunities come in the white space. And the white space is where those inspirational thoughts come from you, not from someplace else. They come from you, but you have to be aware of yourself enough to listen and hear yourself. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, another way, another add on to that is you say you know what you want, but one of the challenges that we found when we run workshops is that people say they want something. And then we bring out a tool that we have called the five wise whys. And we start asking you, well, why do you want what you said that you wanted? So, for example, let's say you want a new car or you want to start a new business. Um, why? Why do you want to start a new business? Is it because you want the money? Is it because you want the fame? Is it because you want different time with your family? Is it because you want to be the boss? The reason that you want something is, is 
as important, if not more important than what it is that you want. Because once you understand why you want something, you've got a different level of energy around that. Right. And then, then you say, okay, I want it because of this reason. Then you ask the question, why do you want it because of that reason? And you drill down. And as you drill down, you'll learn more about what it is that you, first of all, thought you wanted. Maybe it's the same thing, but now you have a better understanding of what it is. And as you continue to ask those questions, you'll find, okay, this is the next step for me because I can clearly understand why I want it. Mm -hmm. And then I can go the next step as to why I want that. And then the obvious thing will be, this is what I should do next. It's amazing how much you will find out when you start listening to yourself and asking yourself some of those questions. Yeah. I don't want this to sound like a negative, but that sounds hard. <laughs> to, to really to really answer why oh, five not, times? It's not hard, Pat. It's not hard. But it does take a little bit of, um, I'll say, self-discipline, uh, for lack of a better term. Because, you know, we go through our day and, and we, we think these thoughts. And, and one of the things that's really, I'll make a, a suggestion for everybody that's on the call here, or the, this video conference here, is watch your thoughts. Just go ahead, and, you know, for the next... Um, rest of the evening, just pay attention to what you're thinking about as you're going through making dinner, cleaning up, getting ready for bed. What are your, what are you thinking about? You catch and, yourself. And, right. Watch yourself. Be the fly on the wall inside your head and pay attention to what you're, what you're thinking about. Because when you start to look at it in the larger context, wow, I'm spending all the time thinking about my mom and, you know, I'm really frustrated with some comments she made to me about something or other then you're realizing you're you're paying attention to something and and you can ask yourself well is that something i really want to spend time thinking about is that really important to me maybe it is maybe it isn't but the fact that you're now aware that you're thinking about those thoughts and it could be something entirely different i mean whatever it is but but watch what you're thinking about and that's where you get the, the choice to say okay i don't need to think about that issue with my mother that's that's a dead and done issue i need to move on and, and move past it and i think that's where people um, get caught up in the negativity of, you know, I should have done this or I could have done that. And they don't think about what it is that they want. They think more in the back versus going forward in terms of where it is they want to go in life or with a particular situation. So it's just, it's just paying attention. It's really being, being aware, being mindful even. In that, in that vein, we have another question. Uh, what are your thoughts on trust? yourself and your intuition on what direction you want to move with your career go for it you definitely want to do that i would say trust okay go ahead peter <laughs> yeah no i think we're going to say the same thing is that tr trust is something you have to build up right so if you're not used to listening to yourself don't all of a sudden start trusting yourself without having some without building it up right, right. because, because you don't, you don't have, you have to set up a conversation with yourself so that you can, you can know what you're going to, not know what you're going to say, but you can listen to what you're saying and be able to internalize it. And as Beth often says, it's not up here that really counts. It's right here. It's right here that really counts. So listen to not just the words that are going through your head, but what does it feel like? Right? How do you feel when you, when you think about taking this next step? Are you nervous? Are you afraid? Are you apprehensive? And then, then drill into it. And you know, you make a comment path that, oh, well, this sounds difficult. And it's, it's not necessarily difficult, but it does take some effort. I mean, the, the people who are successful, who do make good choices, do so because they come at it from that, that perspective. It's, 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 it, it's something that you have to work on in order, in order to, to get there. We, we've spent the last several years because we didn't know this is the way the world worked until <laughs> just, a, just a few years right. ago. But over the last several years, we, we've grown to, to trust ourselves and listen to ourselves a lot more than we did in the past. Yeah. And it's just, it's just you, you can't get it wrong. So, so whatever it is you're thinking you want to do, Spend time with yourself thinking about it. You know, you can go research things and talk to other people as well. But 
But one of the things that Peter mentioned that is really powerful is to pay attention to how you're feeling about something. Because if you are apprehensive or if you're really um, nervous, and that I would say is, is not the same as excited nervous, okay? This is more like fearful nervous. Um, spend time thinking about why you're, you're afraid or why you're nervous about doing something. And, and drill down through those whys like Peter had just, just mentioned because that will illuminate some things that maybe you have some beliefs that um, maybe aren't working for you or you're, you want X but you, you think negative things about wanting X. And so you, you're contradicting yourself. And so that's where a lot of those feelings come from when you start to dig down and try to understand where they're coming from. And that will give you a whole lot of information about what your next step should be or shouldn't be. A really powerful tool that we use a lot is visualization. So we like to think about, well, what's it gonna be like when I get there? And not when I just first arrived, but when I'm there and I've been there for a little while. Right. And, and like you just mentioned there, following your, your, your heart or your gut when you want to take, take on a new job or, or, or take on a different position, right? Think about and feel what it's going to be like when you take on that new position. How does, what is your day like? How, how are you received when you come home? What does it feel like when you talk to your friends or family about the new job? Kind of get into it and see how that feels. And that will give you a lot of feedback to listen to. Mm -hmm. Part of the book, and I'll get to the, to the questions here in just a moment. Um, part of the book, you talk about uh, trusting yourself. Part of the book, I mean, a, a good part of it. How do you learn to trust yourself? I, I know you say it takes time, um, but can you give me some of the one, two, three, some of the mechanics of, of what that means to learn to trust yourself? What are you looking for? What are the red flags and the markers? So I wouldn't say there's any red flags. I would say the first thing you start, you would start with, and this is assuming you're like in a space where your head's really crazy and you've got lots of different thoughts and you're confused and afraid and you want it, you've got a lot of energy, but you're not sure where to focus it. I would set yourself up with a practice around mindfulness. It could be a meditation, it could be yoga, it could be some activity where you're giving yourself some time um, in the day where it's just you and your thinking and you're just, you just, um, take time to, to get quiet, if you will, in your head. You can be out walking in the, in the neighborhood too. Um, but what you want to do is you want to get to a place where your thoughts are quiet and you can just be in your head, if you will, and listen to what bubbles up. And I say bubbles up because it's not like there's a, you know, do this or do that statement. It's more of a thought will just appear from nowhere. You won't necessarily know where it came from, but spend time thinking about what, what that thought means to you. How do you feel about it? So those are some ways to, to start to um, begin to get to one, get to know yourself. And then as you get to know yourself, that's where you start to develop that self-trust and understanding what it is you say to yourself or when you're talking to yourself. Because it's, it's just like when you move into a new neighborhood. You know, you don't know your neighbors. You have to spend time with them. You have to talk to them about this or that. You're, it's just the same thing. So it's, it's no different. And, and, and you can just do little games with yourself. Like, okay, should I go right or should I go left? When you come to an intersection, right? right? To get there and just to listen to yourself. You know, don't do it while you're driving. But, <laughs> but if you get to a place where you can, you know, safely choose A or choose B, listen to yourself and, and go with it. And, yeah. and and certainly don't beat yourself up if you make the wrong choice because you don't have the, you know, just because it may look like it's not the right choice doesn't mean that it isn't the right choice in the long term. But as you start doing little things like that, little, little games like that, you'll start to build up a little bit more comfort in yes. listening to yourself. I started with parking places. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it can be anything. It okay. can be anything. It can be anything. Yeah, and that's what you want to do, right? I mean, like, because honestly, this stuff that we're talking about should be taught in in, in kindergarten. Right. It should be yeah. taught in, 
of course, they kindergartners don't need it. They, right. they need to be not taught some of the, the stuff that they're being taught today so they can remember all this stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it, 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 you can start from that early position of let's just learn to communicate with ourselves so that you can then be able to move forward. Yeah. Very good. Uh, back to questions. What, you're going to like this one a lot. What makes entrepreneurs keep going without giving up when everything seems to be not working? Because you believe in you. That's why. Super. But, yeah, it, it is that simple. It, 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 it is all about a, a trust and a belief in yep. yourself. And, and, and it may waver at times, but you, and also it comes from a, a, a really powerful desire to do something, to make something, to, to make a difference. And, and there's all kinds of different entrepreneurs out there. Some of them want, you know, want the fame. Some of them want the, the money. Some of them want the experience. And, and whatever reason you want to do something, that's what it gets back to what we talked about before. Right. Why? <laughs> Why do you want to do it? Because there's a different level of energy associated yeah. with wanting to be on the top to crush people, wanting to be on the top to help people. So mm -hmm. how are, what, what, what is it that's driving you? And, and then truly understand that and use that to help yourself. And, and there is no right or wrong. I can't emphasize that enough. In fact, um, one of the things that, um, that we uh, try to help, help people understand is um, judgment. There is no judgment. If you look at the bigger scope of the world, um, people make lots of judgments um, and, and we have lots of systems that make judgments, but, but in your own thinking, if you can walk down the street, kind of like I talked earlier about, you know, just spend time watching your thoughts. Another thing you can do is when you're watching your thoughts, look to see how many of those thoughts are judgment thoughts. Oh, this person, why do they have pink socks on with those blue shoes kind of thing? Or just thoughts that just, you know, you, you just go to what we call automatics, where you just, you don't even think the thought just comes and, it's, and you've made a, uh, a judgment about something. And if you step back from that, those, those judgment thoughts, they should have done this, they should have done that, or I should have done this, I should have done that. What happens is you start to notice a whole lot less resistance in your life. And I'll say resistance is the same thing as, as um, negative energy. And when you, when you don't have that kind of negative energy in your life, or you've reduced it by quite a bit, a lot, all of a sudden really interesting fun things happen. And that's why it's so important to think well of yourself and not judge yourself. And I would say that about others, you know, judging others as well or other things, mm -hmm. just because it gets in your way. You don't need that. It's just, it, you don't need to have that. And so I think it's, is as an entrepreneur, there's so many other things that are going to be judging you. You don't need to judge you. <laughs> okay. But you need to um, take care of yourself. You need to, to fortify yourself, if you will. And that's where the trust piece becomes so important because that's what gets you through those really difficult spots. We have a question here who I think is going to put an asterisk on your, there is no judgment. Here is their question. I'll read it verbatim. How to deal with the judgment from family and friends when you want to start a business that has nothing to do with your major or career? <laughs> well, been there, done that. Yeah. Right. We know. <laughs> you know, it, it, that goes that goes back to the trust piece, your self trust, um, because um, every person is going to be coming at it from their viewpoint. They're not going to be coming at it from your viewpoint by definition. Okay, so you just need to understand that they're looking at it from whatever viewpoint they are, and let them own it, but you don't need to own theirs. You need to own yours. That's, that's key right there. You don't think that you have to change somebody else or even that you can change somebody else. The only way you can change somebody else is by changing yourself right. first or changing yourself only. So if you want to make somebody else think differently, then think differently yourself. And, 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 and like Beth said, the only one that you really should be worried about, if, if worry is the right word, is yourself. So take that on and, and let other people have their own judgment, right? There's, there's absolutely, guaranteed, there's absolutely nothing you can do that everybody will support. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're just picking on one particular person who maybe has more influence on you and saying, oh, they're judging me, so I'm not going to do it. 
Well, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot more people along the way that are going to not be not necessarily be supportive of you. But if you've got that conviction and you know why you're doing something, it'll make all the difference in the world to you. So how do I help mom when she's being hypercritical? How do I help spouse when they're being hypercritical uh, so that it's not, so that it isn't a weight that I'm carrying? Um, you know, I think that piece is, um, you don't need to help them. All you need to do is pay attention to what's important to you and perhaps share with them why you're doing it. And then when you're doing that, expect, not expect, wrong word, um, know that you want the best for them and they want the best for you. And that if you pay attention to the kind of, or that part of them that you want to have show up in your life, I want my supportive mother, I want my mom to, you know, really support me, pay attention to that and, and you know, even tell them that. Um, then the other thing is, you know, worst case scenario, limit your time. I mean, it kind of goes back to who are the people surround that you yourself. want to, yeah, who are the people, who are the kind of people that you want to be surrounded with? You know, for me, I just want people who support me. And if you're not supporting me, then I can, I can help you understand why I'm doing something. But at the end of the day, if you're not going to do that, then that's not going to really help me. So, yeah, we, we sometimes have this, this misconception that if they only knew what we know or and they could, then they would change their minds to, 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 to our side, if you will, to, to agree with us. But that's not necessarily the case, right? They, they're coming at this from a complete, maybe a completely different mm -hmm. set of beliefs, a completely different set of thoughts. And to think that you can just say a few words that would convince them, you know, that's, you're, you're, I won't say you're wasting your time, but you're not helping yourself. What you ought to do is convince yourself even more so that this is what you're going after. And um, like Beth said, you, you might have to limit your time yeah. with them on this subject. It doesn't mean you can't love them and give them full support and something else, but you say, listen, this is, this is something I'm really passionate about. And, you know, I, I'm hoping you can support me, but if not, you know, I love you just as much, and then, uh, but I'm still going to pursue it. Yeah. And you know we've we've had um, various degrees of that in our in our own um, family, and so I think it you know it, it it goes back to why do you want to be an entrepreneur? What's what's important to you? And I think if you really spend time paying attention to what that reason is, and really you know dial down in there, then when you communicate that to other people, they're going to see that. There's a set energy sense that you share with other people when you communicate from a position of really knowing yourself. And a, a really simple example that I, I will give to people when they're kind of like, really, really? If you're ever in a, in a uh, uh, like a cocktail party and people are roaming around meeting each other, very quickly, the very, the negative people all group together and all the happy people group together. And if they happen to interchange, they don't stay together very long. They kind of mi migrate away from each other. So, so that's a really, really good example of, of how people pick up on that vibe. Whatever it is that works for them, they, they gravitate towards. So it's the same thing with your family. You know, Sometimes you just have to say, well, you know, this is where I am help they understand, but, but don't, don't let it limit you. I think that's the most important thing. Right. It, it's dawning on me, and I've read your book a couple times, and we've talked before, but it's dawning on me in this conversation. Entrepreneurship is not an activity. It is not a vocation. It is a series of choices about my life. I mean, yeah, it, it, really, it really does seem like it is the definition of me and the decisions I make. Um, and We're part of your book all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so part, entrepreneurship just talks about business, but we're all entrepreneurs essentially in our life, right? We get to choose what we want to do, where we want to spend our time, how we want to invest our the resources that we have. I mean, that's right. that's that's essentially the definition of an entrepreneur. Yeah. One is trying to make money, and now the rest of us are just trying to to, to make make life. Yeah. Uh, segues perfectly into another question. Can you talk about balance between work and life? Parentheses, I work too many hours. Ah, 
Ooh, well, that says something if you put in the parentheses there, you already know it. So, mm -hmm. so I think the thing that's, that's important is, you know, why are you working all those hours? And then, you know, that's, I'm sure you, you could probably answer that in you know, great detail, but I guess alongside that question, I would also ask, why are you working all those hours? And then the third question is, what do you really want? And if you want to work all those hours, then I guess you're getting what you want. But if you don't want that, then what is it you do want? And then once you start to figure out what it is you do want, that's where you spend your thought time. Yeah. So right now, you know, even though we we're, we're not in the, the business world like we were before with a software company, we're in the you can choose world. So we are, we've got another book coming out, we do workshops, we've got a lot of things going on. And you could say that we work all the time, but you could also say we don't work at all right? because I really, we really like what it is that we're doing. And, and you know, we had several meetings yesterday. We've got this meeting. We've got workshops coming up. We've got, we've got seminars coming up. And each one of those things is for us isn't, doesn't feel like it's work. It feels like it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to get in front of people and to talk about the things that we want to talk about. So, so we don't have to think about balance. We, we, we think about what it is that we want to do on any, any given day. And the same thing should be true of the job, the job that you have and, and the potential entrepreneurial path that you take is like, make sure that you, that you're working on something that you're, that you truly enjoy doing. And when you do that, then it won't feel like, oh my gosh, I need to, I, I need to have a balance for it. Now, now there certainly has to be a separation at times where, okay, and you talk about this a lot, yeah. I need to get away and okay, no more, you can choose for the rest of the day. That's why I go for a bike ride and I out of, out of, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. So, but, but, it, but it shouldn't, it doesn't have to be a, a hard, fast line between it. It's, it's more of a, what feels right to be working on today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, another question, what would the number one advice for a couple working together for their startup be? Nah. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. So Just that's joking. not true. This Just is the thing. <laughs> so, so, so first thing you got to do is you have to love yourself, right? You have to love yourself first, and then you have to be really comfortable with your partner and understand, and both of you have to have the same right. reason or, or at least Com compatible reasons for doing what you're doing. Yeah. And, and if one person wants to do it because they want to be super famous, the other person wants to do it because they want to give back to society, then you might have a, you, you're going to make some decisions there that are not going to make both of you happy. So it's really important that you have a lot of time up front to understand why you're going into something and who and, and how it's going to be helping each of you become a better whoever it is that you want to be, right. whoever you are. And, and I'd break it down even farther. I'd say, one, you need to respect the other person and acknowledge what skills they bring to the table, experiences. And, you know, if you're, if you guys are the same, you know, same background, same experience, that's probably a little, going to be a little bit tougher than if you've got, you know, more complimentary. Um, one person does something well and somebody does something else well. And then um, have a, a real, frank conversation about what each of you brings to the table and also when you're not going to be working because that was something that was a real challenge for us early on you know we're working out in the shed in the back of the house well then you came in the house for dinner you were still working it's like okay so where's what's the physical transition between work and not work and and be real clear and hold each other accountable to that because if you don't then everything just then you're working all the time. And then, I mean, even in, in bed, you know, you're talking about stuff. It's like, come on. <laughs> so, so you really need to be clear about where you, what, you know, how you guys would work together. And if you're complimentary and, and I assume that you've thought that through, um, but also, you know, what kind of market are you going after? What kind of product? Those all have um, impacts or um, implications as well. So just think it through. It sounds easy. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's it's totally, uh, yeah. Anybody who's who's worked with a spouse or a loved one, uh, mm -hmm. balances truly everything. 
Yeah. Uh, another question. How do you move from just thinking about ideas to overcoming any fear or resistance and taking the first step to actually doing something to get started? Ah, well, I'd say it starts the first, the trust and the belief in yourself. That's really, really important. You have to have that. Otherwise it's going to be hard, hard to go anywhere with much of anything. Um, I think um, the place that we would start with is, what is it you want and really, really understand why you want that? Because what's going to happen there is when you really go through that process of asking all those, why do I want this? Why do I want this? And go down layer by layer, um, things will start to show up. And the things in particular that show up are beliefs that you have. And those beliefs can limit you. And those beliefs may come up and, and you even contradict some of the things that you think you want to do. And so it's not to say that they're bad beliefs or good beliefs, they just are. And understanding that they're there and then asking the question, well, if I have a, a belief that's contradicting what I think I want, then the question is, is it working for me? Do I need that belief? Is it still relevant? I mean, we pick these beliefs up all over the place. You know, we pick them up when we were kids, our parents are sharing things with us, we watch TV, all this stuff shows up in our life. And so we just don't always know they're operating. And I kind of consider them to be white noise in the background of our, our thought process. But when you really go through and ask yourself, what did you want? Then you start to get clarity. And when you're really clear about what it is you want and you build in a le and you have a level of intensity, you really, really want to do it, you can go a long way. And then you'll start to um, identify things that, you know, there might be some specific fears or worries you have. That's okay. Every, we all have them. It's just a matter of whether we're aware of them and, and pay attention to them. There's also work that Peter's doing on something around this too. <laughs> Yeah, we're working on a, a whole concept about the, the, the resistance, law of resistance. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I would add to, to this, how do, how do you go from a position of just thinking about something to actually making it happen, is to take little steps. And this is part of building that trust that we talked about in the beginning and building up our confidence in doing it. Is, is if you can take small steps, you know, don't just quit your job and, you know, put your shingle out to start a new company right away. Right. That's probably not the right approach is to take little steps. It's like, try to find out ways that you can test out your idea, right? Is this really a good idea? Can I, can I sell a prototype of this? Can I sell a, a manual version of what I'm, I'm trying, trying to do? Take little bitty steps and see how it feels for you, both in terms of how does it the feedback that you're giving yourself, but also what is the feedback you're getting when you're trying to do it? Is it easy for you to do? Is it, does it flow? Or are you constantly finding yourself struggling to take the next step? That, that tells you a lot yeah. about what's going on yeah. be because you, you can do a lot without actually quitting your old job or right. making that change to find out how valid is my, my business concept, how valid is my, my confidence in myself, how valid are, are my beliefs that I will be successful in this. And if you could take, take that early on, you'll learn a tremendous amount and you'll have a lot of uh, confidence to overcome some of that, that fear. Yeah. The other thing too is it takes years to really get things going. Um, I think a lot of people think things just poof come together, but it doesn't. I mean, it took us 10 years to get our software company anywhere close to being off the ground. We went through a whole lot of pivoting and it was painful at times, but we eventually got there. So, so it, it's okay to take time doing this. It doesn't happen overnight. Here at Purdue, we we're all about exploration and, you know, what's the greatest unknown? Uh, is it the depths of the ocean? Is it the reaches of space? I think it's what's in our heads. I, mean, I don't think there's a greater mystery than how we have these beliefs and we carry them. Um, it, it's once you start becoming mindful and start accounting for them, it really is illuminating uh, how many how many touchstones you can find in your past that uh, so uh, so much 
Uh, I have one more question here. Uh, she says you've partially answered it, uh, but this person is working a job that's holding her back. Um, do I keep working there and power through? She says they abuse me in a position I have no interest in and it's a two hour commute. Uh, do I keep working there and power through? Do I start my own business? Uh, you know, how do, when you have a terrible decision to make, uh, is that just a time to, to trust yourself and jump? Yes, trust yourself. I'm not sure if I'd say jump. No, yep. I, I wouldn't go with a jump because honestly, just because you change jobs doesn't mean that your situation will necessarily right. change. Right. right? It's important because we have this thing, uh, one of those points of resistance we write about quite a bit called unlearned lessons. Yes. And we tend to have the, we, if you look at our life, we, we sometimes find ourselves having the same kind of boss or having the same kind of boyfriend or girlfriend or same, the same kind of relationships going on because there's something there that we haven't figured out and we continue to, to run into it. So, so if you just quit your job and go get another job, there's a good chance that you're going to find yourself in a similar situation unless you can really understand what does this mean to you? What is it? What, what am I doing to, to get myself in these types of situations and then slowly work your way out of it. I don't know if we have enough time to go into that, but we write about that quite a bit on our newsletter on some of the lessons that, that we struggle through and, and, and have, have worked to overcome. Um, but that, that's a great one. I, I would definitely be fun to talk a little bit more about that, but don't just jump away from it. Understand the situation you're in and and, and get into it a little bit more. Go back to that. What do I want? What do I want from in my in my job, and why do I want it? Mm -hmm. And then go through that. And you, you mentioned Pat that it's difficult, but it's a lot less difficult to do that, especially when you're in a position where you're, where you're working. You got a two hour commute, right? That two hour drive back and forth. That's a lot of thinking That's a time. A lot of there. thinking time, but don't be thinking about what the crap that you're living through. Think about the what stuff you that you want, right? And why do yes. I want it? And then and then jot it down. You know, pull over a small jot down or record it even, and yeah. say, "Okay, hey, these are the things that I want in my life. This is what I want more of. Don't think about the things I want less of, but think instead about the things you want more of. And why do you want more of those? Just mm -hmm. spend some cycles on that, I and mean, then you've got like. That's a lot of time, but I will say at the same time, be open to those little bitty things that start to show up in your life that are what you're asking for, what you want. So if you want more time for yourself, start to notice the little things that show up that give you more time. Maybe traffic ended up being a lot nicer one day of the week than it, than it typically is. Yeah, that's great. I got a little bit more time. I got to work a little sooner. I was able to get out earlier. So, so then you start to appreciate those things. And that's when you start to draw more of that stuff into your life when you are aware of it showing up. And, and driving is one of those exercises too, where, where like it or not, your, your mind will usually end up wandering. But if you've got as an intention, as you start the, the commute, thinking about, okay, this is what I want. And then let the, basically let things bubble up as Beth mentioned earlier, you'll you'll start to get some some ideas from yourself if you if you listen in. Yep. But don't rush out and do something until you've done some of the work up front to make a difference. Yeah. Good advice. Um, not not easy, not quick and fast, but um, certainly value in, in everything that you have said. Uh, any, and by the way, one person just messaged that they just signed up for your newsletter. So you got one more <laughs> subscriber uh, in the last 30 seconds. So thank Great. you for that. Uh, any final thoughts? We're, we're a bit so over our time. Thing, yeah, so the one thing I would say, um, Peter's talking about you know this commute time. So for anything that you're doing around um, starting to be aware of your thoughts and, and what kinds of judgments that you might be making about things. When that, when you just get started doing it, it it's, it's a little overwhelming. It's not scary. It's just overwhelming when all this stuff is in your head. But what happens when you do this more and more and you, you make it a practice of just paying attention to watching what's floating around in your head in terms of your thinking, it does start to clarify and it does start to get easier and you start to notice things a lot sooner. 
and you don't have to concentrate or, or you know, to be disciplined to pay attention. So it does, it does get better. It does get easier. It becomes more of who you are. Nice. Peter, final thoughts? Yeah, like Beth said, if you can change your automatics from wherever you don't want them to be to where you want them to be, that's a tremendous um, improvement in, in, in becoming who you, who you wish to be. And, and when I mean by automatics, I mean all those thoughts that are running through your head. Yeah. And if you can pay attention more to what you want and not all those all the things that you don't want, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you all. On behalf of the Purdue Alumni Association and all of our members, I want to thank Beth and Peter for a, a wonderful conversation. Uh, please watch for an email in the next couple of days. I'll have a link to this recording. Uh, look for Beth and Peter's book. You can choose wherever you buy books. I posted their website in the chat, so uh, please feel free to go. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, we have people thanking us and telling us how much they enjoyed it. So thank you all very much. Uh, this ends our webinar, and I thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>